Hi, this is Susan Williams, this is Oils Health Matters and Living the Wholesome Life. And we are on week eight, day five of our Positive Peaceful Growth um, calendar that we are following and I'm doing together from Dr. Susan Lyon. She, um, you can buy the calendar at Aroma Tools or Oil Life and it looks like this. And um, if you can follow us, you know that we do a affirmation for the week and an affirmation for the day. The affirmation that we've been doing all week is I am thriving in all I think, do, and say. So we hope that you've you've um, taken the time to meditate this week on, on images of, of thriving, right? Things that thrive. Notice what's thriving. Notice what relationships in your life are thriving. What um, Maybe your finances are thriving. Maybe um, your garden, which probably is over right now, but if you live in the South, maybe you still have some things that are thriving. Um, maybe you just have thriving energy. Anyway, just sit there and notice the things that are thriving and and the things that aren't thriving. Let's let's do some let's do some personal work and let's see if we can figure out why isn't something thriving. What what can we tweak to make it thrive a little bit more? Okay, and with that, we are we are we always have a song for the week, and the song that I I am just suggesting this week, or the song that's resonating with me. You pick your own song, but the song that's resonating with me on the concept of thriving is called "Thriving" by Casting Crowns. Totally love it. Got to check it out if you've never heard of the group or never heard of the song. Okay, so this it's Friday, by the way, and um, heading into the weekend, super excited about. All the fun things that hopefully we and you are doing this weekend. So the affirmation for today is, I am decluttering my mind of less of things that are less than positive. Okay, I am decluttering my mind of things that are less than positive. First, I'm going to hop to that, like, physically. Because I think when we do things physically, it kind of helps us do things emotionally, too, or mentally. And so we are going into the holiday season. You're probably going to have many family tethers in your home. Um, it's also, a, so you want your home to be as clean as possible and getting out some of the unnecessary clutter is definitely one way to make your home much more easy to keep clean. And the other thing too is we are heading into the um, holiday season, the season of giving, the season of generosity. And so if, we, if we're keeping things that um, don't, aren't serving us, um, let's release them. Let's release them to the world. So I know that there's this old affirm, aff, euphemism. There's this old, I don't know if it's called a euphemism. I don't think it is. Anyway, there's this old saying that basically says, waste not, want not, right? And um, there's an old kind of pioneer saying in our heritage that goes, um, and it's escaping me, but something like, um, use it, wear it out. Anyway, so, um, so some people think that they have to just keep everything, um, because they might need it at some time or their children might need it at some time or their neighbors might need it at some time. Who knows why people keep things. I definitely have a hard time releasing some things because I'm kind of more of that person. Oh, what if I need it sometime? Or what if my children need it sometime or whatever? Um, so just do your best to, as you're, as you're evaluating things, um, I think that there's this one woman on some cleaning channel, um, and decluttering channel that basically says, pick up the thing. Does it still give you joy? Is it still useful to you? If not, release it to someone else. And I think that is a super good way of, of not wasting something like when you have something in your home that's not serving you anymore if it, it could if you think it could still be of service to someone release it to your local goodwill your salvation army your in in utah and many places of the world there's a um thrift store called desert industries and which is one of my favorite thrift stores i love thrifting anyway um so you know just go this is November is a super good time to go through the clothes, to go through the toys, to go through the dishes, um, to go through, you know, furniture, pictures, whatever. 
um, books, whatever is not um, serving you and that you don't think will serve you very well in the future, release to someone else. Let, let them have the benefit of that. I have to say that um, one of the one of the Boy Scouts in our in our neighborhood, he did he for his Eagle project, he made a free landing library, and it's just a little weatherproof. Um, it almost looks like, looks like a big bird house, but it's all enclosed, and they have books there that are people like, hey, they're free for the taking. Take it, keep it, take it, read it, whatever you want. Here are free books. And I, I know it's going to get super good use in our neighborhood. People are always going to be donating things that they don't want. I know I have some books that I want to donate it to it too. So um, definitely we want to declutter our physical en environment. And decluttering our physical environment can also help us um, declutter things that aren't serving us. So, um, so when we're talking about decluttering our mind of things that are less than positive, my first thought goes to forgiveness. Like, are we bearing grudges against someone? Are we, are we, are we still, um, are th some past hurts still cankering, um, are hurting us? And I was listening to a general conference talk the other day and they were saying, I think it was Elder Holland who was saying that all of us have past hurts. All of us have things that we've either done to hurt people that we have to forgive, you know, repent of and, and heal relationships for and and forgive ourselves or other people or hurts that other people have kind of given us and that we have to work through and hopefully mend those relationships and hopefully let go of that. Like, you know, we'll still, I mean, I don't know that we're not God and so I don't know that we can erase that from our memory. But we can we can feel less of the hurt as we forgive, as we mend relationships, as we give it to God. So as you're decluttering, I'm just going to suggest that we all declutter some of our hurts, like we all process through them and release them. Okay, other things that you might want to declutter from your mind, um, things that don't that that you had that you bought into in the past, but agreements that you made, I'm going to say it that way, agreements that you made in the past that really don't serve you. So I was listening to this one woman at a conference and she said that when, when she was really, really little, um, one of her teachers pegged her as stupid and, and, um, you can't, you can't do this because you're too stupid for that. And, um, so she bought into that I am too stupid. I can't do that. I'm too stupid. I can't do that. I'm too stupid. And kind of all throughout her her school career and her high school career, she thought of herself as too stupid to do a lot of things. And then when she got to be an adult, she's like, someone said, oh my goodness, you're so smart. And it changed how she thought of herself and it changed what she went on to try to do. And she's amazing right now. She's one of my um, one of the people I look up to, her name is Brienne Heavy. If you ever have a chance to go to a training by Brienne Heavy, I would totally suggest that. She does a training called, um, oh my goodness, I forgot the training. Anyway, but she does an amazing training. If you have a chance, you know, go to it. Um, anyway, hold on just a minute. Okay. So I just actually had a book bag from a chain that I went to. I just had to go look at it. And it's basically Soul Truth Alive um, that she does. Totally worth going to if you ever get a chance to go to that training. But anyway, she was saying sometimes, sometimes we make those agreements. A teacher says, you are stupid. And it's like you mentally shake their hand and you say, yep, I am stupid. And that's how you think of yourself. So someone might say, oh, you're not as pretty as your sister. And you shake their hand. You know what? You're right. I'm not as pretty as my sister. And, and you, you function and you think of yourself that way forever. Not maybe not forever, but for a very, very long time. Until you sit down and you think of that, that affirmation that someone gave you and that you bought into the contract that you bought into at one time. So, <clears throat> so what I want us to do is I want us to really maybe delve deep today. You know, maybe take some time, put on some relaxing music. I love Bach. Um, classical music 
there's like you could do you can google Bach to study to or Brahms to study to or um you know whatever your favorite classical composer to study to and just get that super relaxing music I also think it's super inspiring music and I think that listening to super inspiring music can help us be more inspired so let's start let's sit down let's um think about what how do we think about ourselves and especially in the negative ways that we think about ourselves and who told us that and did we buy into that idea did we buy into that contract have we been living our life in different ways be in, in in negative ways and in a little bit unhealthy ways not not positive ways because we've bought into the contract and then let's make a new contract for ourselves okay um so let's declutter some of those um, unhealthy contract that we agreed to in the past on how we think about ourselves so I'm um, decluttering our mind we can also well we're decluttering some of the negative ways we think about ourselves we can also declutter some of the negative ways we think about someone else and um in the past in the past um video I talked about um, being a realistic optimist or a pe or a optimistic realist and um so i want to kind of bring up that concept again when you were evaluating um and thinking about other people so let's say that someone has has often hurt you in the past like um just said super super mean things to you now um do i want you to to completely um get out of your mind that this person says mean things like if every single time you um deal with this person and they've said mean things to you in the past i i kind of don't want you to completely get rid of that because i want you to do something to to know what's happening so you can get your game plan on when you deal with this person right but i also want you to open let's all as me included let's all open our minds to why are they acting this way and and let's open our mind to what if I what if I tried something different when they did something like that like um what if what if I said you know what you seem like you're really hurting today is there something bothering you maybe that would change the dynamic or if you know if someone says something super mean to you and you can say you know what that really really hurt my feelings but i love you anyway you know there's so many different things that we can do when when um someone is is doing things that just make us feel sad or hurt um so as you're thinking about other people please try to to view them um, if you have like a negative opinion of them, say what what formed that negative opinion? Um, what what evidence do I have on either side? And can I, can I change my opinion in some way, or can I be more understanding in some way um, toward this person? How can I how can I even with the dynamic with this person? How can we forgive and love? So. Um, Anyway, maybe discarding some of, and maybe some of, maybe there's been major change. I also want you to declutter your mind of everything that you feel powerless in. So what if, um, so what if you have a, a, a home environment that you just don't like, it's just not, you don't really think it's pretty and you're like, oh, I can't do anything. Um, well, let's, let's, de let's declutter our mind that we can't do anything. Can we paint the walls? 
Can we put up some pictures? Can we change the carpet? Can we switch around the furniture? Can we at least move around the furniture if we can't switch out the furniture? Like what can we do that brings our power back, our power to change? Because I do think that God made us agents to act and not agents to be acted upon. He does not want us just to sit in a bad situation and think that we can't do anything about it. So um, even changing our attitudes about it. So um, let's think about what. where am I feeling powerless? I'm feeling powerless in this area. Well, let's tell ourselves, let's, let's discard that negative um, decluttering thought that our cluttering thought that we don't want, that we're powerless. And let's say, how can we bring our power back? What can we do to change the situation? And sometimes it might take asking person, what can I do to change this situation? Or maybe it can take <coughs> maybe it takes asking your friends, hey, I have this, this situation that I really don't like. Can you give me some of your ideas on changing this? Or maybe it takes asking God, God, I have this situation that's really a hardship to me. How can I change this? What can I do to change this? Okay, so those are a few ideas of things that you can declutter from your mind. Um, let's go on to the essential oils that we're talking about this week. And so this week, if you've been following us, you know that we are diffusing eucalyptus, which is the oil of wellness, and um, juniper berry, which is the oil of the night or the unknown, um, also highly associated with having fears um, or helping us not to have fears, I'm just gonna say that way. And then Douglas fir, which is the oil of generational wisdom. And if you've been following us, you know that we love Fridays because on Tuesday, Thursday, went, Tuesday Wednesday, and Thursday, we go into depths on the emotional process, um, properties of each of those oils. But on Friday, it's all about the physical. And it's all about what they do for us physically. So for when I when I look at what they do for us physically, this is one of my very, very favorite books. It's called Advanced Oil Magic. You can buy it at Aroma Tools or Oil Life. Super worth the investment. You can also get the app on your phone, which I would totally get. Um, totally recommend. So I'm just gonna kind of go through them in alphabetical order. And we're gonna start start with Douglas fir, which we know is the oil of generational wisdom. And this is what it says, its main properties. Well, first of all, you know that Douglas fir is a tree. Douglas fir is a tree that many people love for Christmas trees. So if you're trying to bring that, that beautiful Christmas scent in, Douglas fir is an amazing oil for that. So it is antioxidant, um, which is an oil that's gonna super help your heart. It is analgesic, which is pain relieving. It is an expectorant, which means if you're gunky, you have a lot of gunk in your chest, you know, you can definitely rub it on to help with that. Okay, so here are some of the top uses for Douglas fir. So if you have muscle soreness, you can put two to four drops into like a teaspoon of coconut oil or, or um, olive oil, whatever oil you like, and rub it on sore muscles. It totally can help with that. Okay, if you're congested, I would suggest the very same recipe, but rub it on your chest and hopefully that will just help you to expel some of that gunk that you have down there. Um, if you have a headache or a migraine, hen, can you hand me one of those oils over there? So if you have a headache or a migraine, what I would do is I would just take my oil bottle. Thanks, here, I'll just take both of them. I would just take my, and this is Douglas fir. Oh, nope, it's not. Okay, so I would just take my uh, my oil bottle and, you know, obviously take the cap off, but just go like this and go like that. Just basically tip it over, and then I would put it wherever it hurts. And I really don't have a, um, a um, headache right now, but I'm just kind of demonstrating, like, if I had a headache, where I might be putting the oils, right? And sometimes you're... Your shoulders with tension are connected. Headaches are connected with that. Oh my goodness, I just put eucalyptus on and it smells divine. Anyway, um, so those are places that I would put it if you have a headache, but definitely put it on wherever it's hurting. Um, if you have, if you're gonna be using Douglas fir for mental clarity, you're just gonna put a drop in your hand, rub your hands together and smell it. And then I would definitely rub it on the back of my neck and kind of on my shoulder area as well. You can also use it for household cleaning. It's super fun to pair with, um, do two drops, 
of Douglas fir and maybe three drops of lemon and put that in just like a, a one of those um, spray bottles you can buy at the dollar store wherever you like to buy your bottles you can make them fancy or plain and then just put that in your um, water bottle and spray it on wipe it off you're gonna love the way it smells you're gonna love the way it cleans and um, okay and then obviously for a cough which I think we have basically congested cough you can also rub on your chest area same recipe that I would use before so the other things that Douglas fir is good with is for arthritis. So basically anything, when you think Douglas fir, you also might want to think pain. So um, arthritis, it can help with constipation. I would do the same recipe, just kind of rubbing it um, kind of in your by your, on, your on your stomach area. Um, it's great for if you're depressed. Again, depression has to do with obviously pain of some sort, emotional pain, right? And you think Douglas fir, you're going to think it helps to us to work through and release pain. Okay, so um, if you're mon emotionally congested, remember that essential oils do emotionally and phys whatever they do physically, they do emotionally. Whatever they do emotionally, they do physically. So if this is really, really good for breaking up and getting rid of the congestion physically, it's also super good for getting rid of the congestion emotionally. Um, anyway, and it can also be good for weight gain. Um, I, for that, I would be basically putting it on wherever you're gaining the weight and put it on top of it wherever you're gaining the weight. Again, I would do, I would um, dilute it with a carrier oil, probably two to four drops in um, a teaspoon of, again, the coconut oil or olive oil or the oil of your choice, and then just rub it on in those places that you're getting weight, weight gain and then maybe also on the bottom of your feet. So it can be super helpful for that. Okay, so here's a fun diffuser blend when you're using Douglas fir. So I really love the, the super chillax blend. It's to help you sleep better, more profoundly. And so it's two drops Douglas fir, two drops of doTERRA serenity, which is super great for helping you sleep. And then two drops of doTERRA balance, which is one of my oil favorite oils, which is super good for helping just like let go of the stress. Just, just let it go. You know why? Sometimes I think we have things that are happening in our life and we can, we just don't need to be worried about them all the time. Like we can think about them, we can ponder about how we can help, and then we can just let it go. Um, the other, the other parts of the time. So, um, again, so that for that recipe, it's three drops Douglas fir, three drops of DoTerra Serenity, and three drops of Balance. Super fun, um, blend to do. Okay, so. Then we're talking about switching off to eucalyptus. This is what it looks like, loving eucalyptus. Just put it on, smells heavenly. And um, so, oh gracious, Caleb, give me my, my notebook, please, really quick. So um, I'm gonna be telling you some of the main properties of eucalyptus, but some of the words I, were not, I was not totally familiar with. So it's anti-phlogostic. Antiphlogostic, which means it counters, it counteracts inflammation. So if you have parts of your body that are inflamed, which also seems to really go with pain, <clears throat> pain is definitely a clue that something is inflamed. Um, you can definitely put eucalyptus on for that. It's also antispasmodic, which means that it relieves involuntary muscle spasms. Good to know. And it's antitussive. I had to look that up, which means it prevents or relieves coughs. I'm loving that I'm getting to know some medical definitions. And um, it's antiviral. We all know, you know, it's it helps to kill viruses. And it's a vermifuge. Vermifuge. New word to me. I had to look it up. And it basically is the same thing <clears throat> as anti anti and the anyway I don't even know how to say that word but basically means it helps to destroy or expel parasites so if, if you have been to another country and um, aren't sure whether you got some parasites um, intestinal parasites or if you eat a lot of ham or have eaten ham ham is notorious for um, giving people parasites so um, Anyway, if you've done either of those two things, you might want to check out eucalyptus. There's a line on how to use it for that. Um, just as a caution, 
Eucalyptus is one essential oil that is definitely not recommended to use on newborns. So if you have newborns or super young children, definitely do your research on eucalyptus and how to use it. Um, okay, so eucalyptus is amazing for cough and congestion. Some, okay, I'm going to some of the top uses. So eucalyptus is amazing for cough and congestion. Again, you can um, do two to four drops in a teaspoon of coconut or um, olive oil, put it on your chest, or you can diffuse it. Super great diffused. Um, it's, again, super helpful for if you have bronchitis or pneumonia, which is major congestion in your lungs and in your um I don't really know the difference between um, bronchitis and pneumonia. I'm sure someone can post that in the comments. I know that pneumonia is worse. But anyway, so just basically put it on your chest. You can also put it on your mid-back area and diffuse it. So um, if you have sinusitis, that you can, you can you know, just take a drop. And then what I would do is I would totally surround my sinus cavity. So I'm not going to be putting it and be super good not to put it in my um, eyes. You don't want to ever put essential oils in your eyes. But I would basically go down my nose, go above my eyebrows, go um, on my cheekbones, just basically surrounding my sinus cavity. Anyway, anyway, so um, if you have asthma, eucalyptus is known for helping with that. Just put a drop in your hand, rub your hands together, um, and smell it. You're going to love it. So basically, drop in your hand, rub them together. Smell it. Oh, it's going to smell so good. Okay. Um, eucalyptus. Didn't know this one. Eucalyptus can also help with menstrual cramps. And um, so if that's an issue that, that you seem to get hit with on a menstrual, on a um, regular basis, definitely you can, I would do the two to four drops in that teaspoon of coconut or olive oil rubbing it over the abdomen area. And again, eucalyptus is one that's super good for mental fatigue. So I'm gonna give you the, the kind of blend for how to relief. So um, you're gonna use one drop of eucalyptus, two drops of peppermint. You're gonna love the combination. You're gonna love, love, love this combination. Especially if you have one of those headaches that are incredibly hard to knock out. Try this, tell me what you think. Okay. Or if you have something else that you love using essential oils for, for headaches, definitely post it in the comments. We'd love to hear about it. So one drop of eucalyptus, two drops of peppermint, two drops of lavender, and one drop of um, rosemary. Put the oils into the palms of your hands and massage onto your back, the back of your neck, um, and onto you know, wherever it is it is hurting. Definitely. Just, just put it where it hurts. That's one thing about essential oils. Um, rule is if it's hurting somewhere, do it where it hurts. Okay? And then um, juniper berry, which we're... Okay, moving on to juniper berry, which is the oil of the night or the unknown. So juniper berry is analgesic, which again, you know, is pain relieving. It is anthropomentic. I think I said that right, anthropomentic. And that's, it's the same thing, anthrop anthropomentic is the same thing as a vermifuge. It helps to kill and expel parasitic worms. And um, it's antiseptic. And it is a nervine, which means that it helps calm the nerves. So juniper berry is going to look like this. Make sure you get doTERRA's juniper berry because it's the best on the market. Not going to go in on, on all the reasons why. You could probably find that in another shout out that I've done. But do your research, doTERRA. 100% pure, third-party tested, every single batch. Um, you can go online and see every single test that's been done on the oil. It has, it has every bottom of the bottle is marked with a stamp that allows you to see the batch number of your oil. So you can't get more pure than doTERRA essential oils. Um, but anyway, it's analgesic, it's anti anthropomentic, it's antiseptic. Oh, I told you all that stuff. Okay, going on to the top um, uses. It's super good for a kidney kidney detox and for kidney infections. So just w rub one drop, one to two drops over the kidneys. Um, you can also take it in a capsule. And if you're wondering what essential oils can I take internally on all doTERRA essential oils, you're gonna see something 
that is like that shows you the supplement facts and I don't know if you can see that but um, it will tell you if you see the supplement facts just like you have supplement facts on your on your um, cereal box it will tell you that you can use it internally so it takes all the guesswork out of can I use this oil internally or not so um, juniper berry is definitely one that you can use internally um, so um, for for kidneys you can put one to two drops in a capsule in one of those um, gel caps that you can buy at any health food store or from doTERRA and um, take it that way um, for diabetes, juniper berry is super good for that. And again, you can put one to two drops in a capsule. Take that daily. Um, for kidney stones, you can put one to two drops of the kidneys, rub it in. For urinary tract infection, you can put one to two drops over the bladder. Um, and it's also good for high cholesterol. So if you're suffering with that, you can put one to two, two drops in a capsule and take that or you can apply it to the bottoms of your feet. It's great for tinnitus, and if you have tinnitus and you're using juniper berry, you know, post something in the comments. We'd love to see how that is working for you. Um, but for tinnitus, again, you, okay, so you never put essential oils in your ear, eyes. You never put, ever, ever put essential oils in your ears, okay? Essential oils are not meant to, like, go into your body that way. So if I'm using it for my ears, I would, uh, you know, put just like one drop on my hand, you know, get it onto my fingers, and I would put it behind my ear, okay? And maybe I would put it in front of my ear, but basically kind of surround my ear, never, never, never putting it in my ear. Okay, and it's also super great. It can, it can be super great for chronic fatigue. And with that, you're just going to, you know, take one drop, and you're going to just put it onto your pulse points. And I am a doctor, and so I'm not saying that, you know, essential oils are going to cure anything or whatever. Do your own research. See what you think. Um, you know, I feel like we we are the person who's in charge of our bodies, and we have the responsibility to be the ones doing the research for what our bodies need. You know, so let's just be, let's just be educated consumers. Okay, so I just, I've I mentioned a lot of different things for kidney relief, and I just wanted to give you a blend for that that I would be putting into a 10 mil bottle. So basically, um, four drops of juniper berry, four drops of geranium, four drops of lemongrass, and four drops of copaiba. If you haven't tried copaiba yet, you're gonna totally love it. People are raving, raving about copaiba. Amazing, so you're gonna basically put four drops of each of those oils into the 10 mil roll the bottle, fill the rest with fractionated coconut oil, pop the top on, and then just roll it over um, your kidneys every couple, every couple hours to support a detox and relief. Okay, so I think that we have talked about the three oils that we are, we've been diffusing the week. So again, eucalyptus, super great at opening, super great at relieving congestion, um, it, eucalyptus is the oil of wellness. We talked about juniper berry. Juniper berry um, is the oil of the, oh, I forgot to mention, if you're having nightmares, juniper berry is one of the top oils, or night, nightmares, night terrors, or if you have children that do that, juniper berry is one of the top oils that helps us with that. Again, the oil of the oil of and what also helps. The less than positive and affirmation for this week is that we are going to be thriving in all that we do and say and just a tease and a sneak peek of what we're going to be doing next week. Next week we're going to be talking about saying yes to life. So tune in next week on Monday to to um, have a conversation with us about saying yes to life. 
Hey, this is Janet Williams with Essential Oils, Health Matters, and Living the Wholesome Life. And we know that you have the power, you have the power in you to make it an amazing weekend. Go and be happy.